So earlier in the video I talked about how there were kind of different build options for Heimdall. The this one allows me to get in, get some damage off, and then disengage. The hunter one allows me to kind of sustain, but I have to hang out in the back line a little bit more. Since I am the solo laner, I wanted to be able to get in the front line and be aggressive. So we're able to get a kill onto the Thor. We're doing some good work right here. The AMC beats us, but we're going to hopefully land some basics. We get the double kill there. We get the shield from Bloodforge. We're going to use the 3 to teleport back. We get the line attack. That is a triple kill. So right here is a possible great kill. So right here is a mistake. We target Bologna. Big mistake. Because there is Poseidon. If we would have focused Poseidon, even if he ran away, um, I think we would have been better off in that situation. What a do, Scooby Doo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer requested video of Heimdall and Solo. If you are new to the channel, we upload six to seven times a week, and the whole intent of the channel is to reduce the Smite learning curve. So we're going to watch a game, add some commentary, and see what went right and what went wrong. If this is something that interests you, please subscribe for more content, and if you are a returning viewer, this is a very exciting game, it's a viewer requested game, and I believe all these stats are posted at the end, so if that is something you are interested in seeing about this game, please hang out to the end. So let's go ahead and go over Heimdall's kit. Um, Heimdall's 1 is going to throw his sword up into the sky, and it's going to act as a ward within 80 units, and then he can use it again to call the sword to come crashing down, dealing damage. Heimdall's 2 is going to be a cone attack, where he blows his horn and does tick damage. There is an inner circle, and if the enemy is within the inner circle, whenever the ability finishes, or if you cancel it, they're going to be knocked back. And a majority of the damage from this ability is actually in the knockback. So right here we're going against Bologna. We're going to want to knock her back out of her 2, and we really just put a damper in her lane clear by canceling her 2. So Neja is going for blue, we are going to want to make our way back there for some XP. Looks like we're going to be a little late, we might miss a little bit of XP right here. Heimdall's 3, let's kind of keep going over the kit while there's a break in action. Heimdall's 3 is going to allow him to open a crystal. So Heimdall plants crystal A, Heimdall then plants crystal B. If he gets in crystal B, it takes him to A, if, it takes him, if he gets in A, it takes him to B. But if he places Crystal C, A is going to be removed, and now there is the link between B and C. And if you were to add another one, the first one that was added, the node B, is going to be removed, and then node D and node C are going to be created. So I hope that was kind of a clear example of how the teleports work. Um, we are going to be using it to get back to lane occasionally, but the cost of that is that early game when we have no points into our three, the cooldown from going from fountain to lane is going to be extremely long. It's going to leave us vulnerable um, to attacks. So right here, we are just getting a good poke onto this bullet. That disarm is going to be a problem. My health is really low, so we're going to pop some health chalices. We probably should have popped those a little bit earlier. But we're going to keep getting basics off onto this Bologna. Heimdall's passive is a uh, beautiful thing. For each enemy god he has vision of, he's going to get in the 2% stacking power. So we knock Lona up, we miss the 1, we probably could have kill potential if we hit the 1 right there. She's just life stealing off the minion wave and I have only health potch for the means of life steal. So right there I see she's using her 2, so I use my 2 to cancel her out. Enemy missing left. Right there we summoned our ward, but then we cancelled it, and then we had a bit of a misclick right there. Looks like. I don't think I was trying to target my own minion wave with that ability. So right here we're trying to get the cleave attacks onto the back line archers. Instead of getting the cleave attack onto just the front line archer. So we're going to clean that up. So Heimdall's ultimate, he's going to dash forward, and if he makes a connection with someone, He's going to yeet them out into space, and 
and you can change the direction you have like a 360 degree option on where you want them to land based on how you're facing whenever you hold so if you want them to spawn, uh, land closer to their tower, you just face forward. And if, but if you want them to land closer to your tower, you want to turn around as you ult. And I believe that's everything about Heimdall, so let's kind of go over the build. There were some options for this game. Um, I asked the person who made the viewer request if they wanted to see an ability-based Heimdall, a more traditional hunter-based Heimdall, going Evo Gauntlets, and then Executioner, Rage, etc. Or like a true solo, um, where I build kind of cooldown items, bruisery items, and he said he did not care. So I went with the ability damage. I did play a game of each style. Um, I had a struggle with the bruiser build, but the ability based damage and the traditional hunter build both uh, led me to success in the dual lane. So I think both of those are viable. I really wish we had the lifesteal of Devos right now going on in this early game. Your middle tower is under attack. Getting bullied a little bit, but we are able to hold our own. We have enough for Transcendence, so we're going to pick this item up, go ahead and back. The reason we're getting Transcendence so early is because we want to start stacking it early, so we get the massive power and we get the cooldown from it once it's fully stacked. We are going to be hurting for movement speed for just a little bit, but that's why we have our portals. So right there, I'm just making sure that my cleave auto attacks are hitting the group of minions, and then my single target is hitting the minion up front. So we're hitting Bologna for about a 97. Piercing sight. She does have lane pressure right now. There's not too much we can really do. She has life sustain, we do not, so unless we can immediately burst her down, she's going to have the favorable traits here. Enemy missing metal. Be careful, left. Looks like she's going for the totem. Piercing sight. We miss our one. That is a little unfortunate. We do have our ultimate. We're going to see if we can maybe ult her into tower. So right here, we're in a bad situation. She ults in. We're going to ult. She's still under tower. Minions aren't under tower, so she's going to take a bunch of damage. We're going to use our one. We're going to cast our one down. We're going to use our two for the knockup. Cast the one down. And we are able to get the first blood. It was a little bit sloppy. We probably should have used the one before or two, but all around, that is a great start to this lane. It's plus five stacks onto my transcendence, plus 500 gold in the pocket, plus I get to clear this wave and then back. And I know I am backing because I have no health pots and I have super low health. So we are going to pick up some boots, only tier two, and then right here, um, I think it's worth being able to just get back to lane faster. The Bologna's Relic should also be on cooldown because she recently used it. So right now we are getting an XP lead. Super glad we teleported back. But right now our cooldown is three minutes before we can use our three again. So not being able to use an ability for three minutes is kind of a very long cooldown. So the trade-off of being able to come back to lane super early is now we don't have the security of being able to use R3 to avoid Bologna damage. It's early enough and we're playing passively enough, kind of sitting back and just collecting the farm, waiting for Bologna to make a mistake. I think it was worth it. Looks like Hera's rotating over. Gonna rotate over. We land our one. Unfortunately, there's not too much left for us to do. If she was a little bit further out, or if we were a little bit closer, we could have ulted her. 
and that could have let Hera reset her cooldowns and then ult potentially. Your middle tower is under attack. So our blue buff got dropped. We're gonna go ahead and back up for that. It looks like that might not have been the best idea because Bologna and Thor are kind of pushing our teammates that are in the right jungle. Should be able to get some free poke off here. We miss our one. And we get poked pretty hard right there. She's gonna get totem. I can't really contest it. And I see Thor's over here, so I'm just gonna back it up, play it super safe. Looks like he's rotating out. So, since we are going the ability based build, we're probably gonna be going the power boots, which is a little unfortunate. I think the attack speed boots would also be acceptable for us here. He's knock, knock, knock up immune while he's spinning, but we are able to survive. If Thor gets a little frisky, we should be able to ult and kill him. It's just the Bologna that's really giving us trouble. Looks like he's gonna back up. I'm gonna go ahead and back as well. Pick up the warrior tabi. And then we're gonna be going into the crusher. Crusher is gonna give us attack speed, pen, and power. And it's also gonna allow us to do bonus damage on our abilities. I may want to return here. So we are a 10, she's a 9. Our teleport, win the fight, and then use our 3 to get back to lane. Help us establish that lead. I think she should actually be in the lead because she's been hitting... She missed one wave, but has been getting more totems than me. I think she'll be hitting 10 relatively soon. Either one, so we're actually winning this fight. And now that we have transcendence fully stacked in our boots, we are kind of hitting pretty hard. So I ult him, but it was enough damage to kill him on the contact, so he does not get yeeted into space. Thanks. So now we want to take advantage of this pressure that we have in the lane. We keep prioritizing blue buff, but we really haven't run out of mana once. So, Bologna's up. I'm betting that her teleport is up as well. If not, then that was a super fantastic kill. Yeah, I don't think that needed too much commentary. That Thor should not have been diving into me. He's a level 7, <laughs> diving a level 12 Heimdall with fully, tran uh, fully stacked Transcendent. That is a Bologna ultimate. We're going to hold back under tower. We have no health and no way of getting it back. An enemy has been slain. Looks like our team is doing a good job cleaning up elsewhere on the map. Right so let's go ahead and back. We are short of the pressure. And we do not have our teleport, so we're going to use our 3. Which is going to put it on another massive cooldown, 175. And as soon as I land, I place my 3 down again. That way it is the freshest node, and if I place a another 3 down, it'll teleport me right under tower. So these block absorbs are not super favorable, especially since my attack speed is so low. Okay. Bologna matches up really well into Hunters, so I think this is kind of an unfavorable matchup. Uh, in my well it's in Bologna's favor against me but i think we're doing a pretty good job of just hanging back i don't think she's applied the pressure to get the kill quite yet dodge the two 
We're gonna cast up the one. The one is going on a wave, so we're gonna tag up the wave a little bit. Now I think the one's about to be on us. We get disarmed. We're gonna use the two to apply a little bit of a slow, get the knockup, hit her with a basic. Use the one. So sh we're gonna ult her, shoot her into space. And unfortunately, we didn't launch her under power, and we were on cooldown on all of our abilities. She panicled. There we go, and we're able to get her with the one. Just pure power output from Heimdall, and that is enough to get the Bologna. So we're going to make our way over to our blue. We have enough money for Crusher, and then after Crusher, we're going to want to be going into Bloodforge. Picked up the blue buff. We just got the right tower, so that does open a few things uh, up for us. Sorry, I feel like my brain just did not wake up this morning. 50 seconds on R3, so we don't want to push up too much, because we won't be able to use R3 to get out. We're going to go ahead and back, get our item upgrades. This was forged by Muspelfire. An ally has been slain. A pair of foes? Okay. We're gonna use our teleport to get back over to solo lane. It looks like Bologna just left, and it looks like there's a team fight going on on the left. Nice job. People died, so it has to be somebody else's fault. Your left tower is under attack. Three of sevens are looking kind of nice. So. It looks like our team has a little bit of a lead. We in our matchup have quite a bit of a lead, up two levels, and 4 and 0. Oh, so, I guess they're. We killed Thor once, so they're 0 oh and 3. We're gonna check their blue buff real quick. Does not look like it's there, so we're gonna rotate mid, see if there's anything we can do. We're just gonna steal these harpies and then make our way back. There was nobody on the enemy team that was in mid, so there's no real reason to push out into the mid lane. We just walked over to see if there was anything we could do. It was just a small window. Looks like Bologna is rotated over. We're going to take advantage of this and clean up the wave and then hopefully make a rotation. Looks like Bologna might be rotating back. Blue's still not there. Thor's hammer was in the background there, so we're going to back it up. We're just going to go for our blue buff, get the XP from that. So Blood Forge does cost a pretty penny, so it's going to take a little bit longer to farm up for that item in this lane. Our team's pushed up a little far on the left side. We're going to try to get some damage off onto this Bologna. You do not want to auto attack her while she's in her block stance, so we're just going to use our 3 to get out. Poseidon's here. That's a Poseidon ult. That's a Bologna ult. We're going to eat somebody into space. Summon our 1. We were super late on casting our 1. And Bologna was able to get her. Super close to being able to get her. Maybe Neja can rotate over and clean that up. Sorry, I didn't rotate it over. Got hit by the ult. Lost a decent amount of health. Come on, Neja. Come on, Neja. Come on, Neja. Please. Please. There we go. Got blown up by Poseidon, but at least she got the Bologna. Anyway, we just took a lot of damage. We ulted Bologna, and then we had the option of backing or trying to stay and continue the fight. We chose wrong. We should have just backed up to the tier 2 tower. And then if they wanted to get the tier 1, we're at a point in the game where it's probably fine. We shouldn't have tried to 
invest so much in defending the tier 1 when we had the option of just backing up to the tier 2 and playing it safe. So we didn't have enough money for Bloodforge, which is unfortunate, so we're going to teleport back to our lane and begin the farming process all over again. So just looking at levels into the game, Poseidon is the highest on both teams, and then 17 seems to be that next threshold where we have our mid and myself in solo lane. Our carry lane is getting a little bullied. The path is clear. Alone is here, so let's see if we can bully her out of lane. Landing some basics, but she's just life stealing up. Life steal might be a thing. I need to get well as a solo laner you usually want to get lifesteal anyway the question with Heimdall is what kind of lifesteal and since we're going to be ability based build I think it only makes sense that uh Brawler's beat stick can be our anti heal item so even though we're hitting Bellana with auto attack she's just lifestealing up enough to where it feels kind of pointless and she has frostbound so now we really do not want to be face trading with her. Frostbound's an annoying item. If you get caught out, there's not much you can do to get away from it. The path is clear. You're on a rampage of destruction. An enemy has been slain. Looks like the party's been in left lane almost all game this game. Which is unfortunate. Whenever Thor rotated over, we were able to get a kill. I wish we would make more rotations over. That looked like a laggy throw. So, we're gonna have to back. Because Frostbound Bologna is annoying. Although we do have lifesteal, it's just not great lifesteal for basic attacking people. There's her ultimate. 30 seconds before we can use our 3 again. So if you see that line between the 3, the, the two 3 objects, that is actually going to be like a ward line. So if anybody crosses it on the map, you're going to be able to see. You can use this to be pretty effective in dual lane. I have not really used it effectively this game, or kind of in general. Neja is here, Thor is here. We get some poke on the Thor. We're gonna use R2. We got the slow knock back Alona. Thor is up in the air, and then we're gonna <laughs> eat him back into space, but just get the kill on contact. So even though Neja's here and we're throwing damage at this Bologna, she's just not really going down. Come on and hit me! Be right back. Just gonna go ahead and pick up the blue, grab the easy XP, and that puts us at level 20. This Brawler's Beat Stick is going to really allow us to start being able to get some kill potential onto the Bologna because she won't be able to regen as much. It's also going to be effective against the Ardeo late game, and I'm assuming that Amuz and Cab and Poseidon both have some form of lifesteal going on. Poseidon's making a rotation over, we might be able to cut him off. Nope, looks like he's gonna get out. Flash of hope food. Enemy missing left. Enemy right. Got some poke onto the Thor. Right. Some poke onto Poseidon. That is a huge pick. If we can get Poseidon here, that'll be great for the team fight. We got the kill there. That is fantastic for the team fight. Here comes the Bologna. We're just gonna try to get some damage off. We do have our ultimate. We should ult her back into the team, but we're able to just clean it up. We're going to ult AMC, he beats, so that throws us off quite a bit. We're going to run around, try to reroute. Enemy 
We got some poke onto the AMC. Now we're all team crashing onto this RDO. We fly this slow. She's dashing away. Our time is best focused on hitting the tower. So, 8 1 and 1. An absolutely fantastic start. Attack, fire giant. So I make the call to go for fire. It's just the RDO up. People are responding now, but RDO is all the way in the other lane. So this should pretty much be a free fire. Well, there goes hair out of fire. That's a, that's a shame. So we're able to get fire. We're gonna go ahead and throw a three down. Be right back. Thor is rotating in, but we're already out, so we should be good to go. We're gonna go ahead and pick up Brawler's beat stick. Now that we have the anti-heal online, let's just kind of do a review of the build. We're gonna teleport over to Dam uh, to our blue buff. So transcendence is going to give us a lot of power, mana conversion into power, and also cooldown percentage. Power boots are going to give us power and movement speed. Um, the crusher is giving us the attack speed, power, and penetration. That's all going to help with our basic attacking, but its passive is also going to apply bonus damage when we land an ability. So the enemy team just got Gold Fury. Um, Blood Forge is our lifesteal item. It just has a ton of power with 75 power and a little bit of lifesteal is going to help us out. It's the lifesteal item with the most power, so that's why we went with it for our ability based build. And then we're getting Brawler's Beat Stick for the anti-heal against Bologna, Ardeo, and potentially the Amuza Cab and Poseidon. And then we're going to be going into the Heart Seeker, which is kind of the go-to ability damage item. Retreat! Retreat left lane! Group up! Lona is here. Now we're gonna be able to tussle with her now that we have some anti heal online. She's still gonna be able to stick to us like blue because she has frostbound. We use the two to create a little bit of space. Then we're gonna use the three to teleport all the way back to spawn. I don't think I meant to teleport all the way back to spawn. I think I probably thought I had a three setup closer to blue. So we're just going to teleport back to our tower using Retreat. our relic. On my way. On my way. Oh boy, this is not a fight I want. So that is a Poseidon ult. Yeah. So that was three people running around the corner. The second I threw a basic attack, I got a movement speed debuff applied to myself. Just from basic attacking, you can't move as fast while basic attacking. And then the enemy team, just three of them came around the corner. Decided an ult, gobble gobble. Please. GG, good night. Not much to do in that situation. We did have our sanctuary, but we were not quick enough in being able to activate it. So Heimdall did just recently get a nerf to his ultimate and the ward vision radius of his one. His ultimate used to do a crazy amount of base damage with some pretty nutty scaling. They adjust this a little bit. So now a lot of the damage is kind of on the back end of the ability instead of on the front end. Your middle tower has been destroyed. We're going to clear this wave and then go help the team in right. Some infernal force powers your strikes. Your right tower has how the mighty fall. We're using our two to get a little bit of a slow. Flash of food. Looks like they are peeling towards fire, but fire is down, so we are good there. We have enough money for Heartseeker, we should back relatively soon. There's a Thor nearby, for some reason I don't need to camp. 
Our team's rotating mid. We're gonna push up right just a little bit and then look to rotate over as well. We are at the point in the game where we wanna be grouped up with our team, trying to get picks wherever we can, and then pushing objectives once we have the advantage. Excuse me, have a little bit of the hiccups. So we got our wave push, we're gonna go ahead and back, get our Heartseeker online. This was forged by Muspelfire. Now we're gonna teleport back to the solo lane using R3. It's gonna put it on about a minute cooldown now that we have it maxed out. One minute is much better than three minutes. So early game, it costs a lot more to teleport from spawn to lane using your three. But late game, it's not as important. It is kind of important to keep a note on whether you're gonna be able to use your three or not. Right here was a terrible engage. Oh my goodness. He just ran between a whole bunch of people. Should definitely have rerouted there. I think part of the issue is I'm thinking Hein is a normal solo laner. So a normal solo laner can make that high route and then push through mid and get some burst onto somebody. We weren't really building any defense. So we are super squishy. We smack pretty hard, but we are not the best front line. We're like a front line who has to disengage as soon as his abilities go on cooldown. So we dove in between people, they were able to just target me, I don't have any kind of escape, and my 3 was on cooldown, which was what I was talking about right before that happened. So, bit of a misplay there, should probably have rerouted and, and appeared in middle lane through a different path. Friends are not to be trusted. So, our team is actually down now. We are down in gold, down in kills. We have an 18 on our team, and they all have level 20s, which is fine. I'm not gonna hate on somebody because they're not 20, 30 minutes into the game. So, we do not see the enemy, which means they are probably hitting an objective. So we're gonna check the objective. They are here. We're just gonna resume the progress. And easy is able to clean it up. Place a three for teleport. It's gonna teleport across the map so we actually step out. We need to place one a little bit in a we need to place one in a defensive position. That second one will do. So we are grouped up, we did get the Gold Fury kill. This is your last chance. The path is clear. We could totally push this team. We just need somebody to tank. I'm soloing, so I'm gonna tank it. That is a middle tower. That is a Poseidon ult as well. Baiting uh, out the Poseidon ult and him not getting a kill is pretty big. So that was one of the dumbest things I've done all game. The team was calling retreat and I just went all in onto Poseidon, did not have the damage to kill him, and then I just got turned on. So that was a very bad engagement. Like probably the dumbest engagement I've done in a while. So we have enough for the movement speed pot. We're gonna go ahead and buy that, pop it, and then save up a little bit more money for boots. I guess we could talk about Heart Seeker for 10 seconds while we're waiting to respawn. Heart Seeker is a great item because it's gonna remove a percentage of the enemy's health. That means if they have 50 protections or 500 protections, you're gonna be removing a steady percentage of their health each time. That is why this item is such a great item. Soul Reaver is like the magical version of it, and Heart Seeker is the physical version of it. So it looks like our team is going to want to kind of scope out Fire Giant. Maybe take some defensive positions around it. 
Retreat middle lane. Put your faith in none Attack but yourself. So earlier in the video, I talked about how there were kind of different build options for Heimdall. The this one allows me to get in, get some damage off, and then disengage. The Hunter one allows me to kind of sustain, but I have to hang out in the back line a little bit more. Since I am the solo laner, I wanted to be able to get in the front line and be aggressive. So we're able to get a kill onto the Thor. We're doing some good work right here. The AMC beats us, but we're going to hopefully land some basics. We get the double kill there. We get the shield from Bloodforge. We're going to use the three to teleport back. We get the line attack, that is a triple kill. So right here is a possible great kill. So right here is a mistake. We target Bologna. Big mistake. Because there is Poseidon. If we would have focused Poseidon, even if he ran away, um, I think we would have been better off in that situation. That Bologna is super tanky. That Poseidon is fast, but squishy. If we could get the Poseidon, then we could potentially get the Bologna and turn that into a pencil kill. But I don't think we were getting that Bologna. She was very tanky and melting us faster than we were melting her. <laughs> Does this Terra model look like she's running with her like shoulders in front of her feet? Okie dokie. So, we are kind of catching up in gold, although at this point in the game it doesn't really matter. We sold our boots and picked up Mantle of Discord, that's going to give us 10% cooldown. It's also going to give us 60 physical and magical protections, while also giving us an amazing passive. If we fall below a certain health threshold, we're going to become CC immune and unleash a stun around us. That should buy us a little bit of wiggle room and also tell us when we need to disengage from the fight completely. Looks like the enemy team is going around Fire Giant. We're just hanging out. It looks like they might just be warding versus actually going for it. So for some reason our one didn't get called there. We get stunned by Thor. This is a bad little fight. So we're gonna reroute. We get stunned out. We're gonna be. We don't have deeds. But we're able to teleport out. And I think, yep, we're just gonna back. We have bad positioning, so we just wanna back and try to get better positioning. Let our team dance around with the enemy team a little bit. Looks like Poseidon is a little far up. Hopefully our team can crash. There we go. Ardeo, there's their team. So we can rotate behind him. We might be able to do some good work here. We got some... We took AMC, like half of AMC's health. So there, AMC ulted us and we tried to ult. Oh no, we're gonna die. That is unfortunate. So right there, we tried to ult AMC, but right as we were trying to ult, he ulted us, and AMC's ult has a cripple. The cripple will not allow me to ult, so I had to wait for the cripple to expire, I believe. I, I don't know, Heim's ult is CC immune, so that might take priority over the cripple, but I thought I couldn't ult in that situation because I was crippled, which then leads me to delay for a second. And then I end up missing my ult altogether. And then they just burst me up. But if I could have gotten my ult onto that AMC, there's a good chance we would still be alive. Alright, so our middle Phoenix is down. Our team is starting to group, starting to push them back. Looks like they're going to be able to just disengage. So we need one good fight here, and then whoever wins that fight is going to win the game. There's three people over and right. I thought AMC was going Gold Fury. It's probably better to rotate over to the team. So that is a pick. That's a big deal at this point in the game. Attack the Gold Fury! 
On my way. We're gonna make our way over to gold. Looks like we have a lane up. So AMC was there the whole time. The fire the is clear. Our team's grouping up on fire. I think by the time we rotate over there, it's gonna be pretty much dead. And the only way that would backfire is if there's a team fight that breaks out. Looks like Thor made an attempt to steal it, but was unable to. We get a pick onto their assassin, so now it's a 3v5. We have fire. If we can get one more pick, we can close this game out. We can close this game out. Ardia will be up by the time we get a phoenix down. We're just going to clean up this wave. The team is pushing. We're going to place a ward to teleport back to in case we get to any trouble. Get some ability damage off of this Ardeo. If she goes down, yeah. So this should be game. If two people left, we have the full five with Fire Giant. Very nice. Well, I think that's it for this one. If you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. The stats of the game are posted at the end here, so if that is something you are interested in, be sure to hang out. If you want to see any particular god play, just let me know in the comments or in the Discord server. Thank you for stopping by and watching some Smite with me today. Hope you had a good time. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.